I don't think it's any secret that Albus Dumbledore is arguably the greatest wizard of the age. He's proved it time and time again, despite being one of the most popular Harry Potter characters, always trying to protect Harry, leading the Order of the Phoenix in the fight against Voldemort, and ultimately giving his life in order to help Snape gain the Dark Lord's trust, Dumbledore didn't exactly have a squeaky clean reputation. He actually has quite a dark past, something he's deeply ashamed of and something that really haunts him. Dumbledore has done some awful things in his time both past and present and we're going to take a look at some of them today. Here's 5 truly awful things that Albus Dumbledore has done. Before today's video begins, I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about today's sponsor, Audible. Everyone, when it comes to sponsors, I never recommend anything that I don't believe would be beneficial for you all, and since my entire YouTube channel is based on a book series, you're probably starting to see why I'm so happy to partner up with such an awesome company. Guys, I have used Audible for years and could not be happier recommending this app to you all. Many of you are also aware I've got a second vampire-based YouTube channel, so my chosen audiobook at the moment is Blood and Gold by Anne Rice, which comes after my last audiobook, The Vampire Armand. It's amazing to hear both Marius and Armand's different takes on the same situation when they crossed paths. If you haven't read any of Anne's work, please do. With that being said, it isn't just audiobooks, guys. The Audible app has podcasts, wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedy, and exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. It is everything you love to listen to all in one app. You have a playlist for life. Trust me everyone, there will be no regrets if you take my advice and choose to download this app. Audible are so confident that you'll find something you like that they want to give you an incredible offer, an incredible deal today. Audible want you to have 30 days free on them. Try it out. See how you feel. There's nothing to lose and only listening convenience to gain. Guys, to avail of your offer, you can click the link in the description below or go to your web browser and type in audible.com forward slash HP Folklore. That's audible.com forward slash HP Folklore. Or if you want even more simplicity, simply text HP Folklore to 500 500. Three different quick ways to get your free trial now. Let me know what audiobook you choose in the comments section below. Number 5. He repeatedly put the students in danger. Despite having the students' safety and best interests at heart, the headmaster had seemed to be placed in danger more than once. For starters, he had the Philosopher's Stone move to Hogwarts in order to keep it safe, even though it was the most sought-after object in existence. Voldemort himself had penetrated the castle with the assistance of Quirinus Quirrell in order to steal the stone. There's not a single person he wouldn't have killed in order to get his hands on it either. Also, having a series of challenges or tests in order to gain access to the stone is basically inviting anyone to try their best at stealing it. The following year, he refused to close the school when the Chamber of Secrets was opened, despite being actually present when it was opened previously 50 years ago and dealing with the death of Myrtle Warren. Everything pointed at school closure when the students began being petrified, but Dumbledore chose to keep the school open. And then there's the Triwizard Tournament. He didn't even contest the tournament's return, let alone being hosted at Hogwarts when the tournament itself was cancelled due to contestants being killed and even judges being seriously injured. Number 4. Sending Hagrid and Maxime to negotiate with the Giants According to Dumbledore, sending two half-giants that had absolutely nothing to do with the full-blooded giants who lived in the forest was the way to convince them to join the fight against Voldemort. Not only had the giants been subjected to basically non-recognition by the Ministry, they were also looked upon as a dangerous species by the government, nothing more than an unwanted burden on the magical sector. The giants, despite not being the most highly intelligent creatures, definitely knew their position in the eyes of the Ministry. 
Hagrid doesn't exactly seem like the greatest negotiator either if I'm honest, and with the Death Eaters also trying to recruit the Giants, it's no surprise that he and Madame Maxime narrowly escaped without being seriously hurt or worse, killed. At least, if Dumbledore had gone himself, it would have been a more logical choice, but instead he put two people's lives at risk. Number 3. He abandoned his family. Remember the part where I said Dumbledore had a dark past? Well, abandoning his family was a big part of it. I've always said there's been two Dumbledores, the one before Ariana and the one after. As many of you are aware, Dumbledore was quite self-centered in his youth. He knew the incredible ability he had and how far advanced he was in comparison to other wizards his age. He had a lust for power that completely overwhelmed him. It brought out the most ambitious side of his personality, and after meeting the like-minded Gellert Grindelwald, the two were set upon locating and uniting the Deathly Hallows in order to achieve global domination. Albus, despite being the oldest, was to leave his younger brother and his even younger sister Ariana by themselves with Aberforth barely old enough to take care of himself, let alone their little sister. And FYI, their parents are dead at this point, so they're all basically orphans. Albus didn't care. He wanted greatness, he wanted power, he wanted to enslave the Muggle race, I might add. It was only through Ariana's accidental and untimely death did the young Albus finally sober from the realisation that what he was planning to do was completely impractical. Unfortunately for Albus, his brother wanted nothing further to do with him after the incident. Number 2. He raised Harry Potter to die. It's the part of the video where I really have to question Dumbledore's morals because, despite wanting to protect Harry from being discovered by Voldemort should he return, he didn't exactly protect Harry from anyone else. He left the boy with the Dursleys, who turned Harry's life into a full-blown horror story. In my opinion, Petunia and Vernon should have been arrested and jailed for the emotional abuse they inflicted upon Harry in an attempt to make him feel second to their son Dudley. Dumbledore had the ability to cast the correct protection charms and place Harry with a family who would genuinely cherish him, instead of seeing him as nothing but a burden like the Dursleys did. It didn't really stop there for the boy who lived because his real name should have been the boy who lived but was really supposed to die. Dumbledore quickly figured out that part of Voldemort's soul lived inside of Harry, which basically made the boy a living horcrux, as many of you already know. He allowed it to lay dormant instead of trying to find some way to extract it. He accepted that in order for Voldemort to become completely mortal once again, the horcrux in Harry had to be destroyed, which meant Harry had to die. The headmaster displayed some of his old traits from his younger days by accepting Harry had to die. After all, it would mean the Dark Lord's demise, which was a necessary sacrifice for the greater good. I'm sure Gellert Grindelwald would have been proud of that one. Number 1. Asking Snape to kill him. I've said at the beginning of this video that Dumbledore willingly gave his life in the hope that it would help put an end to Voldemort. It's remembered as his greatest moment and in turn gained Snape the trust of the Dark Lord, but in actual fact, it condemned Snape in more ways than one. For starters, asking Snape to kill him could have split the latter's soul, rendering him unable to enter the afterlife. Yes, I am aware that Dumbledore was quite sure that Snape killing him would not affect his soul because he didn't actually want to kill him, and the reason behind it was just. In addition to Dumbledore willingly allowing and accepting that he wanted to die. So, if Snape's eternal peace isn't a big enough sacrifice, he was put right in the firing line of Voldemort by becoming the new master of the Elder Wand, or so the Dark Lord believed, which as we know is the one thing Voldemort wanted to be himself. What's worse is that Snape was then killed for control over a wand that he didn't even command. He could have easily told Voldemort that it wasn't in fact him, but he didn't. That's a more heroic death than Dumbledore's if you ask me. Oh, and if Snape's eternal peace and being killed for a reason that wasn't even true wasn't enough, 
His reputation was also destroyed. He would go down in history as the man who killed the great Albus Dumbledore, the one who betrayed the Order, the one whose name would not be mentioned and if it was, it would only be mentioned in disgrace. Thankfully, Snape gave Harry his memories in order to make sure his name was cleared and Harry knew the total truth about who he was and what the boy's final role would be. But yeah, asking Snape to kill him was the worst thing on this list, if you ask me. With that being said everyone, that's my take on the 5 truly awful things Albus Dumbledore has done. I'm sure you'll have your own to add and please feel free to do so. Tell me your own list in the comments section below. Instead of unsubscribing to the channel, which is what the majority of people are doing if they don't like my video. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the very next video.